So this is our MRI, uh, magnetic resonance imaging, and it's a different kind of imaging than the CT that you've already seen. CT is a kind of x-ray technology, and this depends on a magnet to reorient molecules in the body, and we can create images out of that that are very helpful diagnostically. It's a, it has a different effect on the body, so one is x-ray and one is not. This is not x-ray. This is particularly useful for um, central nervous system and uh, nerve tissue. This, that shows up very well on MRI, whereas CT may be more useful for so other kinds of soft tissues, organs, and so forth. Um, uh, MRI is also very helpful for certain kinds of orthopedic injuries, joint injuries, and um, so we use it very in increasingly frequently. So uh, this is another part of the um, radiology department. This um, enables us to do uh, different kinds of imaging, um, true x-rays, chest x-rays, um, abdominal x-rays. We can look at your sprained ankle here. We can figure out if you have a broken wrist after trauma. Um, we use this lots and lots. You can see that some of our building is a 1957 building, and some of our building is a 21st century building. Right, and the equipment's 21st century, but the building is still. Yep, and some of the equipment is older too, but we maintain it and we keep it in good shape. We're constantly looking to what is the best way to spend our money to deliver the best care in the most efficient way. So, and now we're coming around to the laboratory. And this everybody knows this place. CAP accredited lab. Yeah. Hi, folks. We have Gino Gang here looking at the lab. Keep look, start looking like you're doing something. <laughs> look busy. How busy are you guys right now? We are very busy. Are you always? Is it, is it year always round busy. always busy? Always busy. Unbelievable. Yes. Wow. Yeah. I can't be the always left for me. Even though, even, well, that's okay. But even though um, there's fewer people here, what do you do in the summertime? Do you bring a lot more people in? We catch up on paperwork and stuff in winter. Oh, but okay. You can't get to it all in the summer. I see. And they're always serving the emergency department. Yeah. We do over 70,000 lab tests a year here. And the small space, they do an amazing yeah. amount of work. Um, they're specialists in tick-borne diseases. You know, I can be in the ER and I suddenly think, oh, I'd like to have a Babesia smear on a patient, and they've already done it before I've even thought of it because they're just that good. Yeah. Do a lot of pre-op stuff. You know, year. that's a good question. With the, the okay. with the experience that you guys have had in detecting tick-borne diseases. Do you get a lot of places off-island, like sending you blood to check it? To see? No, 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 not here. No. I think Dr. Lepre specializes in that department. So like but don't here. you check it? Don't you check it here, though? I mean, we have lots it? of people who call us for advice about how to test given certain symptoms that they may have mm. um, because they know that we see so much of it. Right. Um, I would think that we would be a kind of a, a source for, for off-island for are. people to come and get information. Tim Lepre is, but we get calls all the time through the ER, and um, these guys are really good at looking at um, peripheral smears, blood smears, to look for Babesia organisms or Ehrlichia or organisms, and they look at the um, patterns of lab tests that may suggest tick-borne disease so that we have a low threshold for treating. So it's, a, it's a, a wonderful service that really supports the emergency department and the rest of the hospital and the private um, offices as well. And I guess they're doing a good job. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> okay, they're great. doing a good job. Great, great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right, I'm just going to do a little call. Uh, hematology, we've got blood bumps up here, and then in the back we've got micro. Yep. So microbiology, where we look at we urine. Everything? And oh, I've never been back here. And blood specimens. Oh, all right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Okay, sure. So this is doing, a lot bigger. If yeah. we're doing a culture, yeah. for example, um, a blood culture or a urine culture, so we can grow an organism and then we know what we're treating and we can target the antibiotic to that. Oh, okay. This, that's where and what do these happen. some of these machines do? So they, they cook it in here or something? They bring it up to. Uh, yep. Or analyzers for testing chemistries. Yep. So this one, that does all the thyroid stuff. This is our main chemistry panel right here. Yeah, this one gets used quite often. Yeah, that's the big boy. So this is a combination office, but also has uh, storage equipment. We're pretty smushed for a lab. Yeah, I see that. Um, well, you've got your... But your... we can make a lot happen in a small space. Okay. 
Uh, so this was a new part of the building. That what was this built? Infill. Uh, about 2000. Yeah, 2000, I remember 2001. this, sure. Yeah. So the old ER was very, very different. Hey, Ollie. <laughs> um, hey, Lisa. So this is the entry to the emergency department and the waiting room. Sure. Um, and this quiet is quiet around here right now. It's quiet around here on a January morning. You That's bet. right. Yeah. That's right. This is where uh, this gets really hopping in the summertime. This is where we register our emergency department patients. Then this is the office of our nurse manager, Martha Greenfield. Hello, Martha. Hey, Martha. How are you? <laughs> this is our emergency department. So how many doctors do we get to keep on this time of year anyway, January? So we have, uh, I'd say, two full-time and uh, two part-time PAs, physician assistants, who are the backbone of our coverage during the off-season. And then we have some per diem physicians who help us out during that time. And then we bring in about 30 or more um, doctors from Memorial Day to Columbus Day to provide the care during the busy season. So if, if, if there's an emergency, PAs. there's a PA here. There's an emergency there. It will always be someone here who is well qualified, and that may be a PA or a physician. And if it's a PA, and in any case, always backed up by one of the full-time staff. And so, if your doctor is Dr. Lepre, he can, he, he would get a notice of that, and he would come he right he would be informed. Um, he, Dr. Lepre is always available to the ER, and if needed, and um, he'll be informed in an emergency to come right away, or I might be called to come right away, or any one of the sure. other docs if needed. Um, do you guys all switch off on different days too? We do. You go on so there's call always a back, what we call a backup attending, who yeah. will be available to support the ER if needed, but also to admit a patient to the hospital if that's required, or to help um, transfer a patient off island, or find the best place to take care of them. How often do you get a call if you're on call? I mean, it's in very. It varies. Um, in the in the slow season, you can go you know, a whole shift, a 24-hour shift, and you may get one call, two calls, or, or less. Mm. Um, and then in the summer, it can be very busy. You can have as many as five admissions um, and lots of calls. So um, it's very variable, yeah. uh, as is, that's really the, the puzzle of this little hospital. It's kind of two hospitals. It's one kind of hospital from Columbus Day to Memorial Day and another one from in the high season.